How's it going, class? I'm Zach, and welcome back for another lesson. Critical hits are the bane of any Nuzlocke's existence. No, crits! If you have played in Nuzlocke, you have encountered crits losing a mon or even your run. Today, I would like to go over how critical hits work throughout the generations. In this video, you'll learn what the critical damage and ratios are throughout the generations, what does it mean to play around a crit, and what items, moves, and abilities affect critical hits. Before we talk about crits, we have to talk about how normal damage is calculated, but the Spark Notes version. The damaging moves have ranges. Well, most damaging moves. There is RNG that the game determines what possible roles the attack will do. If you look at this damage calc, you'll see multiple numbers of possible damage. This is the range I'm referring to. Let's start from the beginning. Gen 1 crits are the most unique compared to all the other generations. Critical hit ratios are determined based off the Pokemon's base speed. Looking at this chart, you can see that Electrode, the fastest Pokemon in Gen 1, has a critical hit ratio of around 27%, meaning Electrode is hitting critical hits about every 1 in 4 attacks. There is a calculation to determine the crit rate in Gen 1, and here it is on screen, but just consult the chart in the description below instead of doing math. Gen 1 crits are also scaled based off of Pokemon's level. You have your starter Charmander in your very first battle against your rival, and a newly evolved Charizard versus rival 3. You'll see that the level 36 in this equation has an increased damage with crits compared to the lower level Pokemon. Gen 1 crits also ignore stat boost, stat drops, including speed, paralysis, and focus energy. Focus energy is glitched in Gen 1, and maybe I'll talk about that in another video, but basically never use it in a Gen 1 because it works about the opposite as it is intended. The other thing to consider in Gen 1 is high crit moves. These are the moves that have high critical hit ratios, and because of speed directly affecting the equation, the combo of high crit moves tend to always create a critical hit. Here's the equation for a crit with a high crit move, and you can see that the percentage is above 100%, meaning the move will always crit. Starting with gold and silver, crits begin to do 2 times damage regardless of speed stats, or anything else for that matter. Crits will now ignore half to attack from burn, ignore boosts given by screens, and any stat modifiers if the defender's defense stage is equal to or higher than the attacker's attack stage. Let's look at an example. So we have two Mews in this damage calc, with the same stats and same moves. If we give the attacking Mew plus one attack, you'll see that the damage done by Shadow Ball is increased. If we give the defending Mew a boost of plus one, or even plus six, you'll see that the crit still has an increased damage, but the range stays the same. This is because it is ignoring the stat boost now. Crits happen in Gen 2 for standard moves every 17 out of 256 times. One in eight chance for high crit moves, or normal moves with focus energy, now that it works as it's intended, and 1 in 4 for high crit moves plus focus energy. Crits begin to become more consistent from Gen 3s to 5. And when I say more consistent, I mean the rules don't change in those generations. Crits happen 1 out of 16 times for normal moves. So compared to Gen 2, the first change is making normal moves crit 1 in 16 chance versus that 17 in 256 chance. For moves that create higher crit priority, the odds stay the same. Now, critical hits will completely ignore negative stat changes to the attacker and positive stat changes to the defender when calculating for a crit. Critical hits will still ignore the stat boost from screens, but now we'll calculate for the half attack from burn. This damage calc shows, as we change our attack stat, we increase our damage output the attack does with a critical hit, while if we lower our attack, you'll see that the crit damage always stays the same as if our attack was neutral or minus 6 attack. Once we get to X and Y, critical hits no longer do the 2 times the move's damage, but now 1.5 times. It follows the same chance rules previously mentioned about gens 3 through 5, except plus 2 crit stage is now a 50% chance to crit. We also have a new mechanic introduced in Gen 6. Pokemon Ami, everyone's favorite mechanic. When you max out a Pokemon's affection to level 5, you add an extra crit chance. Looking at this chart, you can see that there are different stages of crit odds. So, if you have a Pokemon that has level 5 affection, 
you automatically bump the crit chance into plus one stage. Then if you use a high crit move, you can advance to the next stage of crit chances. We will come back to this chart in a little bit so I can explain how to get to some of the other stages. With the introduction of the last 3DS games, comes the last changes we have seen to critical hits. Gen 7 has Pokemon Refresh that with level 5 affection increases crits plus 1, just like Pokemon and me. From Gen 8 onwards, we have the merge of friendship levels and the affection boost. So Pokemon with a max friendship of 255 get that plus 1 crit stage. Also starting in Gen 7, critical hits on standard moves now crit 1 out of 24 times, but plus 1 and plus 2 crit stages are still the same odds. Let's stop talking about the numbers in the RNG that you cannot control and focus on variables that you can. What does it mean to play around a crit? Essentially, it's playing safe in your playthrough, knowing when you are in a critical hit range from your opponent's Pokemon to knock you out. This requires mostly knowledge and a little bit of skill. You can always just use the damage calculator and get almost the exact ranges that attack will do. But if you don't use a damage calc, or you play on your free time without a computer in front of you, or maybe you just don't care that much, you can always just look at how much damage you take from the move and multiply it by two times in gens two through five, and 1.5 times in gen six and onwards. Now we will look at the factors Pokemon can change. Starting with abilities. As of today, we have six abilities that affect crits. Introduced to Gen 3, we have Shell Armor and Battle Armor. Both of these accomplish the same thing, by preventing crits. This ignores all crit stages, moves that always crit, and moves that guarantee the subsequent move to hit a crit. In Gen 4, we get three more abilities. Super Luck, which increases crits by one stage. Sniper, that adds additional 1.5 damage to the calculation when a move crits. So now instead of two times damage on crits, Crits now do 3 times damage, or 2.25 damage in Gen 6 on due to the crit multiplier being lowered. Last for Gen 4 is Anger Point. And when a Pokemon with Anger Point gets hit by a crit, it maxes out its attack stacks by plus 6. The latest critical hit ability is Merciless. When the target is poisoned, attackers' moves will always crit. Items that modify crits, starting with Gen 2, are the Stick, or leak as it was changed to Gen 8, and the Lucky Punch. They both do the same thing for Farfetch, Surfetch, and Chansey. Respectively, they increase critical hit chance by plus two stages. Also starting in Gen 2 was the introduction of the Scope Lens, which increases by plus one stage. Generation 3 introduces the Lance at Berry, that increase critical hits by two stages when HP drops below one quarter. And the most recent item, is actually back in Gen 4, which is the Razor Claw, which increases crits by one stage as well. Moves that affect crits can be categorized into four groups. Moves that change crit chances, high crit chance moves, moves that always crit, and moves that can never crit. Moves that modify the critical hit ratio, starting with maybe the most known one in Focus Energy. Focus Energy gives plus one crit chance in Gen 2, and then starting from Gen 3 onward, gives plus two chance. Laser Focus guarantees that the next move will crit. Lucky Champ prevents crits from landing for the next five turns. And then there's the Z moves. Strangely enough, you'll notice that Z Focus Energy is not on this list. This list boosts crits by plus two stages, but when Z Focus Energy is used, it boosts accuracy by one stage. Moves that have higher crit ratios than normal are on screen now. I want to just point out some of the abnormal ones. 10 million volt T-Bolt has a plus two crit chance. Cryochop is only a high crit move in Gen 1. Razor Wind has a high crit chance in Gen 2, but not in Gen 3, and then returns to being a high crit move in Gens 4 through 7. Sky Attack starting in Gen 3 to now. And Triple Arrows in Legends Arceus has a plus two crit ratio. Everything else on screen has a plus one crit chance in the respective games. Here are the moves that always crit, but don't forget, they do not crit against Battle Armor, Shell Armor, or Pokemon that has used Lucky Chan the last five turns. And finally, these moves cannot crit. These include moves that have set damage, like Dragon Range, counter attacks, like Counter, and Oko moves. Some moves that have some uniquities, 
Flail and Gen 2 cannot crit. Future Sight and Gens 2 through 4 cannot crit. Reversal in Gen 2. Tomb Desire in Gens 3 through 4. And Spit Up in Gen 3. So what's the too long didn't read? As always, I'll have a master sheet in the description that'll update as I discover mistakes I stated, or as Pokemon changes their mechanics. Things that you should keep in mind. Damage is a range, meaning that crits also have ranges. Gen 1's crits chances are determined by speed sets. Damage is calculated different depending on the levels, and crit ignore all stat changes, good or bad. Some Pokemon with high crit moves will always crit due to their speed sets. Also, don't forget the Gen 1 misses, even though you can't really plan for those. Gens 2 through 5, crits do 2 times the moves damage. Then in Gen 6 and onwards, crits do 1.5 times damage. Gen 2 will ignore stat changes if the defender's defense stage is greater than or higher than the attacker's attack stage. Gen 2 ignores the screens and burns. Gen 3 onwards will ignore screens, but will no longer ignore burn. Gen 3 will also ignore negative attack changes to the attacker and positive defense changes to the defender. Watch out for being in ranges of crits in your playthrough. Look for pivots that match up better and stay one step ahead of your opponent. This is the critical hit chances in chart form, shout out Bulbapedia. And be on the lookout for moves, abilities, and items that can affect crits. Thanks for making it to this part of the video. If you learned something or enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribe for more videos to help understand Pokemon better. On screen is a video where I explain how all generations of Pokemon determine which Pokemon will be sent out next in trainer battles. Leave a comment on what video topic you would like to see next. I'm Zach, aka KinglerChamp, and I'll see you in our next class.